Hello, welcome to this video resource from The Connection Church, where you will experience a casual place with serious faith. We invite you to come check it out for yourself this Sunday morning. Visit our website, theconnectionchurch.org, for service times and locations. Now, get ready to hear another fun and practical message about how you can get connected to God and the people around you. Good morning and welcome to the Connection Church on this extra long Labor Day weekend. I hope you're enjoying your Labor Day weekend and maybe tomorrow you're going to grill out, you're going to cook out and and so, uh, you know, school just started this past week and it's it, we're, we're ready for a vacation, right? Like tomorrow, that's, that's perfect. It's been kind of a um, hard week. We had some big losses, right, with uh, with. The Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, and uh, John McCain, the great uh, war hero, uh, happening. It, but it's been there's there's been some uh, some great things that happened. You know, last week at the Connection Church, we had the I think our new favorite preacher at the Connection Church, Pam, brought the message. She brought the heat, didn't she? So that was that was awesome. That was awesome, and uh, by the way, also, today, we are live in San Marcos, so everybody give a shout out to San Mar- our San Marcos peeps. We are one church in two locations, and so, uh, so good to, to have you watching also and listening in San Marcos today. Um, next week, we're starting a brand new series called Confessions of a Bald Pastor, all right? And so it's going to be a lot of fun, and it turns out that pastors actually struggle with some of the same issues, some of the same challenges that everybody else does. So we'll be talking about that next week, but, uh, but today I want to ask you, when was the last time you went through a storm in your life? Maybe for you, you would say, I was, I've just been stuck, kind of stuck in, in a rut. And as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about a trip that my family took, a vacation to New Mexico, where we went snow skiing in New Mexico. And this trip was a little infamous for my family. This was back when my youngest daughter, Bethany, was in the fourth grade. And just my first, even though this is not one of those confessions messages, my confession is, I may have said something like, on that trip, I may have said something like, wow, my family really sucks. I think I may have said something like that. Uh, because, you know, I was trying to push us to be daring and adventurous and ski, and my, some of my family, they were like, ah, that's not our thing. You know, we want to just go back to the, to the lodge or wherever we were staying. It wasn't really a lodge, more like a, more like a campground, but... But uh, uh, so, so I, I was getting my girls, you know, some, some training on the bunny slopes with an instructor. They have like a little training session where you're learning how to, how to ski or at least kind of slide down a little, little incline. And once Bethany had accomplished that, I thought now is the time I'm going to get her up on the top of the mountain and we're going to ski down this mountain. So, so with a little arm twisting and encouragement, I, I get her over to the, the ski lift and there's the, you know, the chairs just keep coming, they're benches basically, or board, you know, it's just a little thing you sit on. There's no uh, straps or seat belts or anything like that. You just kind of, kind of get on. So as dad, my job I felt like first was to get her on the lift. And so all these people are in line and here comes the chair and this is ours. So I get her on it, but the problem was I didn't have enough time to get on myself, so she's going up this lift, no, nothing to hold on to with, uh, with some random strangers, and then I get in the next chair, and we get up to the top. She dismounts, gets off at the top, and I get off at the top, and I say, okay, Bethany, are you ready to ski down this mountain? And she's like, no, no, I'm not skiing down this mountain. I can't ski. I'm not doing this, but we're at the top. Of the mountain, so I'm like, there. We don't have any choice. I mean, we we could 
uh, try to set up camp here maybe. We, maybe we could, you know, fend for some, f- some berries or something. And, and, but, but we have to get down from this, from this mountain. So, so with s- some more encouragement, we, we started our journey down the mountain. It took us about probably an hour to get down <laughs> a- until we got down to the bottom with, with uh, you know, victory. And, and we were excited to celebrate with some hot chocolate. But um, some of us, Today, you might feel like, okay, I'm at that point where I'm sort of stuck and I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know how I'm going to move forward. And so today, I want us to look at this story that's been on my heart and mind uh, recently from Matthew chapter 14. And it's what happened with uh, one night with Peter and the disciples. They're in this boat and, um, and they've got to, they have the opportunity to take a big step of faith. And as your pastor, my desire for us as a church and for you personally is that we would decide today that we will not be boat sitters, but that we will become wave walkers, that we will step out of our place of comfort and security and into that great plan, those great miracles that God has in front of us as a church. And, and I'm especially excited about that today because next week is a, is a landmark uh, day for us as a church. Did you know that back in the day, uh, all the way back through the mists of time in 2004, next Sunday is the very Sunday that we started the Connection Church. So it's a big day for us next week that we celebrate. And, and every year, every year, it's one of those days where we feel like it's the launch of a new season. It's the launch of a new move of God and a new wave of God's spirit. And so we're preparing ourselves for that even today. And I want us to be ready as a church to step into that, to take those risks and to walk boldly towards something greater that God has in front of us. And so I want to set this event up for you, what's happening in this, in this passage, in this story. You see, Jesus, he's just gotten some very bad news. He found out that his cousin, John the Baptist, had gotten uh, violently killed, executed by beheading. And John the Baptist was, was his family member who had baptized him very close family member, and, and Jesus was going through his very own personal storm. And, and it's been said that, that if you had a choice between a physical storm that you would go through or a personal emotional storm, that the emotional storms many times, and usually they're much harder than the, the, you know, the, the storms with the, the wind and the waves and the water and all of this. So... So um, Jesus, what he does is he takes his disciples, he says, I want you to get in this boat and I want you to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee and I'm going to go off and and get along with God. I'm going to pray and I'll meet up with you guys later. So uh, so that's, that's what's happening here. And so in Matthew 14, 24, we're going to begin to see what it takes to get out of the boat, what it takes to get out of our comfort zone and our security. And so in Matthew chapter 14, verse 24, it says, Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, They were terrified in their fear. They cried out, it's a ghost, okay? So the disciples here were in trouble. They were professional fishermen, and they had fished on this sea many, many times, but they were facing a huge storm, and they were afraid. In fact, they had been fighting the waves and the wind and the water for so long that they were worn out. They were exhausted. How many of you would say, would you say today, you know, I've been fighting this personal battle 
that I've been dealing with for so long. And today, if I'm honest, I'm exhausted. I'm worn out. Okay, for some of you, the most spiritual thing that you could do today, go home, take a nap, right? That's just, some of us are so exhausted, right? You just, you need some rest. And I think it's really interesting to, to think about this, that, that these disciples, what were they doing? They, they were doing exactly what Jesus had told them to do. They were obeying, they were following. They, Jesus is the one that said, get in the boat and, and travel across this sea, he was saying, you know, I, I know what is in store for you, but sometimes following after Jesus will lead us actually into a storm. Even though they were serving Jesus, they were working for Jesus, they were led into this storm because Jesus wanted them to see something new about him. He, he wanted them to know that they could trust him and that he could do something great through them. And so um, sometimes for us, we say, what, was I doing something wrong? I'm facing this storm. What did I do wrong? No, you might have been doing exactly what God wanted you to do, but there's this storm. So what do you do uh, in, in those situations? Well, notice that Peter had this bold vision. What did he see? He, he saw Jesus, the wave walker. And um, and notice that it was three o'clock in the morning. Okay, for some of you, that's like really late at night. But for some of you, it, it's like early in the morning. But why did Jesus wait until three o'clock in the morning? Because he, he wanted them to know that he was going to show up. And he shows up right on time. And when he showed up, they were very afraid. Because they saw Jesus kind of strolling through the storm on the water and they thought it was a ghost. All of a sudden, this is a ghost story, right? So they start screaming like little girls. It's a ghost. And Jesus tells them, he says, do not be afraid. Turn to the person next to you and say, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Yes, because some of us, we just need to hear that today. Jesus was there and I want you to know, Jesus is here in this place today. Do not be afraid. He wants you to see him as he really is, not in the messed up way that sometimes we picture him because of the way he's presented in our culture, or maybe because of the way sometimes Jesus is presented, even our churches, maybe the church you grew in, up in. You, you got a, a uh, warped picture of who Jesus is is. And Jesus, he, he would say today, I want you to see me as I really am, as your savior, as your friend, and as God in the flesh, that we would see him and not just as people um, have pictured him. We need to open up our eyes and see that he is here and we need to see the chance to do something even greater. See, Peter saw this opportunity in front of him. He had known Jesus long enough that he knew that when Jesus arrives on the scene, the impossible becomes possible in your life. And so I love Peter because he was so impulsive, right? And I can relate to that. He saw Jesus out there and he said, hey, I want to get out there too. Jesus, if you can do this, I want to get out on the water Two. And now they were, there was this storm and it was pitch black. It was so dark outside and, and the, the, the lighting was flashing and they could see Jesus out on the water and, and they were cold and they were wet and they were afraid. But somehow Peter summons this incredible courage and, and he has enough courage to ask Jesus to invite him out onto the water. See, because Jesus is here, Anything is possible. The impossible now has become possible for you today. And uh, so, so we have this opportunity in front of us today, but how do we seize that opportunity? How do we step out in, into what God has in front of us? Well, first, it takes big faith. Check this out. Uh, when you have faith in a big God, Jesus is going to get you out of your boat, get you out of that place that you've gotten stuck in where you can walk on the water. When I was 
uh, uh, younger, when I was a teenager, I actually spent one night, we were out have, at a swimming party, and I was that kind of nerdy kid, I guess, but I would, I would kind of walk up to the edge of the, the, the pool, and I was just like, you know what? I know Peter walked on the water, and Jesus walked on the water, and so I'm going to have enough faith. I'm going to walk on the water, too. And so I just start stepping off and into the water, and uh, pro tip, it doesn't really... I, I, it doesn't work, okay? I have never been able to do that. But, uh, but why, was Jesus, why was Jesus walking on the water? He wasn't trying to show off like, like hey, guys, look what I can do. He was, he was trying to teach them something that they desperately needed to know. And he, he wants us to have faith to step out of the boat, to step out of the boat, to leave that place of comfort and security and start to follow after him into that, that plan and that adventure that he has in front for you. Check this out in verse 28. It says, then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat. Notice he says, if, if it's really you. He's not even totally sure, but Jesus calls him out of the boat. And Peter's been a fisherman his whole life, and he knows one thing for certain. When there is a storm, the safest place to be is in the boat, not in the water. So, so why does he ask Jesus to call him out of the boat? Because he wants to get closer to Jesus. He needs to get out of his comfort zone and out of his place of security. And I wonder for us today, what is your place of security? Maybe for you, it's in relationships. Maybe when you have conflict in a relationship, many times what we'll say is, you know what, I'm done going to them. If they want to make this right, they're going to have to come to me. They're going to have to make the first move, and they're going to have to ask me for forgiveness. And then you open up your Bible and you see that, that God says that we need to be the ones to go to them and offer forgiveness, to forgive them. And so we start to think, well, maybe I need to be the one that's proactive in this relationship. Maybe I need to be the one that goes and asks for forgiveness and offer forgiveness. At that moment, you're beginning to, to think, I'm ready to get out of the boat. I'm ready to get out of my place of comfort and security. For some of us, it might be at your job where you say, I've started to cut some corners and I'm not really representing God in the way that he really is in my life. And so you start to realize that you value your integrity over your job. And at that moment, you begin to get the courage and the faith to get out of the boat and to trust in Jesus instead. You know, God wants to use you. Think about that. He wants to use you. And you might think, I, I don't know that I could ever really be used by God. But, but I want you to know today, you can when you have enough courage to get out of the boat, to step out, to say, hey, I want to be a part of the mission that God has called us to at the Connection Church, to see lives changed by the power of Jesus. And so I'm going to step up and I'm going to volunteer and serve on our dream team, which is just the group of people who serve and make Make all of this happen each week. And that might be you. And you know it takes faith, but God wants to use you. So Peter listened to Jesus, and he did what Jesus said to do. And I want you to know Jesus is speaking to you as well in your life. He speaks to us through his word. And when you hear Jesus calling you, I want you to make sure you're backing it up and understand that, that he's never going to say anything that goes against what he's already said in the Bible. So you, you back that up and you check it out. And also, just to let you know, today, you know, we've got a new, uh, the new season of the um, daily devotional. The, it's called the, the Word for You Today. And you can pick those up in the lobby today uh, so that you can spend time each day with God, hearing from God, doing what he's calling you to do. And then you've got to have faith to walk on the water. Did you ever wonder as you think about this story? How far did he make it? How many steps did he take? Here's a, a, a person walking on the water. So, so what do we do? After we get out of the boat, we just take our next step and take our next 
step. And sometimes it's just the small things. We look at Peter and we're like, man, I, I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy that's out there walking on the water and I want to do the big things. Sometimes it's just the small things. Sometimes it's loving your wife by doing the dishes. And you're like, uh, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to do the dishes. I want to, I want to walk on the water, you know? Well, listen, doing the dishes for some of you, it would be a huge miracle, right? Uh, doing the, the small things, you know, Jesus, he was for the outcast and the down and out. So we're going to be for the outcast and the down and out. Jesus was all about serving. So we're going to be all about serving. That's what it means to follow Jesus in faith. Now in Matthew 14, 29, it goes on. It says, Peter walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and he began to sink. But you know, Peter was doing something amazing. How was he able to walk on the water? He wasn't using the power of positive thinking. He wasn't saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. No, he had his eyes fixed and focused on Jesus and not on the waves and the problems around him. Every day we get to choose, am I going to focus on my own problems or am I going to focus on God's power at work in my life? And you're like, well, the, the waves, the, wa the problems, the waves, they're crashing around me. How do I not look at the waves? Well, keep your eyes on him. Focus on him, what he's calling you to do. And, um, and take the, just the next step. For some of us today, it might be your next step would be your first step of giving your heart and your life to Jesus, to become part of his forever family. For some of us today, it would be, I'm going to take my next step and be baptized. For some of us, it would be taking my next step and joining a connection group. Our connection groups are starting up next week. And, and I wonder with Peter, you know, I think about him being in the boat and those people that were the disciples that were in the boat with him, you know, you've got to have the right people in your boat. That's a connection group. And we all need to be a part of a connection group. But then for some of you, it, it may be saying, I'm going to come to growth track today. That's my next step. And I'm going to find out about the steps in front of me because I don't really know what those are. Well, Peter knew he didn't have anything to lose. The storm was, was raging all around him. And he knew that Jesus was out there and he wanted to be closer to him. And he was so desperate to get closer to Jesus that he was willing to keep walking. But then disaster hit and Peter started to sink. Listen, if you're a wave walker, sometimes it means you're going to start to sink. I mean, disaster struck, and Peter blew it. He failed. There was a gap between who he wanted to be and where he was at that moment. And he began, it became dead weight in the water. He started to sink like a rock. Why is it sometimes that we just kind of are content to sit back, sit back and stay in the boat in our place of security or when we get out, we begin to sink. I think one reason is because of lack of passion. How bad do we want it? How comfortable have we gotten in our boat? For some of us, it would be a fear of failure. You know, if I step out there, I'm going to look foolish. I'm going to look silly. Maybe that's what kept the other 11 disciples in the boat. They, they were afraid of what was out there on the waves. And, and maybe they just had a lack of faith. And for some of us, it's that. But, but remember, it's not the size of our faith, but it's the size of the God that we put our faith in that matters, okay? Um, what, what, happened to, what happened to Peter? He, he got out there onto the, the water and the waves, and he said, what am I doing out here? I'm not supposed to be walking on the water. I'm not in the right place. What am I doing? And he began to say, you know, I got myself into this mess, now I've got to get myself out of this mess. And he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to sink. Peter isn't just facing the challenge of the waves. He's facing the challenge of failure and his own personal 
failure. A lot of us, when things are going great in our life, we've got great faith. Man, I'm doing so great. I'm walking on the water. I've got this. But when the, the problems start to hit, that's when we cower back. That's when we fall. And when we fall, we like to hide and pretend it never happened. And if you walk on the water, you know, sometimes you're going to sink. And the way that we face up to our failures is by crying out to Jesus and saying, I don't have this. I can't do this on my own. Jesus, he knows your failures. Maybe you've had a failure this past week. Maybe you've had a failure this past year. But here's what I know about Jesus that that encourages me so much. The one who knows me the best loves me the most. He knows your failure. He knows what you've done. And when Peter cried out to Jesus, Jesus immediately reached out and saved him and lifted him up. Don't wait till you learn how to swim. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus now. Now, notice that, come on, that's good. Go go for it. All right. You know, you know, you think about Peter, and a lot of times when this is preached, he's, he, he's kind of the failure because, you know, he, he was walking on the water, but he sank. He took his eyes off Jesus. But I don't see that as a failure. I see that as victory. He was the one who had enough faith to get out of the boat, right? And, and Jesus says to him, oh, you, you have so little faith, but at least Jesus is saying you had some faith. You had enough faith to get out of the boat, to not simply live your life as a boat sitter. See, Jesus can save you, and he can change your situation when you have enough faith to cry out to him. And um, I think about the other disciples. You know, they missed out. They missed out on so much because they got to see the miracle, but they didn't get to experience it personally because they weren't willing to get out of the boat. And I want all of us today, I believe God is calling you to be a wave walker, not a boat sitter. Why do we get out of the boat? Because Jesus is calling us. Jesus is calling you into something more, into something greater. And I love how they responded how the disciples all responded to this miracle. They began to worship Jesus. They saw what he could do, and they worshiped him. And worship, understand this, it's not just what we do during this hour together. Worship is what happens when we go home. Worship is what happens on Monday. Worship is what happens 24-7 in our life. And it's so much more than just believing. Worshiping is living a life that is bringing glory to God And so for some of us, you know, today, we've become content in our boat. We've become content just kind of sitting, and and we've gotten into this rut. There is a high price to pay for being a boat sitter. You're missing out on so much. You're missing out on the life that God has in front of you. There's nothing more sad than regret. You know the mantra of a boat sitter? It is, if only. If only. If only, if only I had. The boat is the place of dead dreams. It's boring. It's not really living. I want you to listen to this challenge. To sinful patterns of behavior that never get confronted and changed, abilities and gifts that never get cultivated and deployed until weeks become months and months become years. And one day you're looking back on a life of deep, intimate, gut-wrenchingly honest conversations that you never had, great, bold prayers that you never prayed, exhilarating risk that you never took, sacrificial gifts that you never gave, lives you never touched, and you're sitting in your recliner with a shriveled soul and forgotten dreams, and you realize that there was a world around you that was in desperate need and a great God calling you to be a part of something bigger than yourself. You see the person you could have been, but you weren't. You never followed the calling of Jesus. You never got out of the boat. Today, if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat you got to be willing to step out and to follow that calling of Jesus. So how long, how long are you going to remain in the boat? Are you ready today to step out and test the waters? 
in front of you and begin to step into what Jesus is calling you to today. I want us to stand together and pray. Heavenly Father, in this place today, God, we recognize that following you is risky. Following you is uh, exciting. God, that you have so much more in front of us and even miracles. God, we don't want to look back on our lives and miss out on what you were calling us into and and the miracles that you had in front of us. So God, today, give us the faith and give us the courage to step out, to follow after you. And God, when we fall, when we sink, that we would cry out to you knowing that we're in your hands. God, thank you for the faith that you've given us in this place. And God, even for those in this room that say, I just don't have much faith. You would say, you've got a little. Put your little faith in a big God. And today, maybe for you, it would be that step of giving your heart and your life to Jesus. He's calling to you to get out of the boat, to take that first next step. Would you be ready today to give your heart and your life to Jesus? Would you pray this prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I need you in my life. I've been living my life apart from you. I want to thank you for dying on the cross for me and for raising again. Today, I ask that you would forgive me, that you would change me, that you would make me part of your forever family. And from this day on, I want to follow after you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, and welcome to The Connection Church. We're so glad you're here with us today, and here's some ways that you can get connected. On September 30th, you'll have the opportunity to publicly commit to raise your children according to God's word and God's ways with our parent-child dedication services. To participate in this fall's dedication service, you'll need to attend the mandatory parent meeting on Sunday, September 23rd at 1 p.m. in the conference room. Lunch and child care will be provided. For more information, write the word CHILD on your connection card. Join us for First Wednesday this week at 7 p.m. We'll experience the sound of music, the celebration of communion, and the power of prayer. It's the perfect way to start a new month. Girl Time is back. It happens next Monday, September 10th at 7 p.m. Ladies, you're invited to a night filled with friends, faith, food, and fun. You'll be encouraged and inspired to grow in your faith in God, and you'll have the chance to connect with other ladies at the Connection Church as well. Child care is free, but is required when you RSVP to Sandy at theconnectionchurch.org. Students, 7th through 12th grades, you're invited to the 4th Annual Fuse Hooligans Party on Wednesday, September 12th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. There will be a live DJ, massive phone pit, prize giveaways, and more. For more information, contact Fuse at theconnectionchurch.org or talk to Pastor Bobby in the Fuse Lounge. If this is your first time with us, you're our VIP. So text the word WELCOME to 512-359-3400 and visit the red carpet area to receive a free gift just for you. We hope you enjoyed this video resource from The Connection Church, and we want to get connected with you. Visit theconnectionchurch.org for more information.